Hello and welcome to this video on the concentration and second gas effect. Uh, this video leads on from the previous video on blood gas partition coefficients and I strongly advise uh, watching that video first. And the video will be in two parts, the first of which uh, looks at the concentration effect and then we go on to discuss the second gas effect. And I'm very deliberately talking about it in that order simply because the second gas effect is purely a consequence of the concentration effect. So in a viva setting, even if you're asked about the second gas effect, it's probably worth talking about the concentration effect first, because this leads on to the second gas effect. And like anything in the FRCA, a definition uh, is a useful starting point. So the definition of the concentration effect is the phenomenon by which the rise in alveolar partial pressure of nitrous oxide is disproportionately rapid when it is administered in high concentrations. And this is the uh, definition given in Cross and Plunkett, which is a, a very good book, um, which I would definitely recommend you getting your hands on for any revision. And some important points within this definition are that it relates to nitrous oxide and that it's a disproportionate rise when high concentrations are used. And by way of a quick recap, we saw um, in the last video on blood gas partition coefficients that the general trend was one of reducing number for the blood gas partition coefficient corresponding to more rapid onsets of action, more rapid uh, achievement of equilibrium. The, the one that bucked the trend on this was nitrous, where despite having a larger blood gas partition coefficient at 0.47, was still faster onset than desfluorine at 0.42. And we said that this difference, this uh, um, going against the trend, was a consequence of the concentration effect. So what's going on? Well, the cornerstone to the argument about uh, the concentration effect is that nitrous oxide is far more soluble in blood than nitrogen. To quantify solubility in blood, as seen before, we can use the blood gas partition coefficient. And if we compare the values of the blood gas partition coefficient from nitrogen to nitrous oxide, we see that there's roughly a 30-fold increase in solubility of nitrous oxide compared to nitrogen. And this has an important effect. And before we go on to talk about nitrous, we'll just consider what happens during a respiratory cycle when a patient's breathing air. So we've got our patient and they've got some lungs and they're breathing air. And we focus in on the alveoli and pulmonary capillary. Now during the respiratory cycle, there'll be a net diffusion of oxygen out of the alveolar space into the pulmonary capillary. So we'll get a bit of oxygen diffusing out, down its concentration gradient. There'll be a small amount of CO2 diffusing into the alveoli down its concentration gradient, but again, only small amounts. The bulk of the volume of the alveoli will be made up of nitrogen, which is about three quarters of the volume. The consequence of that is that during the respiratory cycle, you don't see a significant change in alveolar volume when a patient is breathing air. Now let's consider the same patient, and again, focusing in on the alveoli and pulmonary capillary, but this time our patient is breathing nitrous oxide at 60%. Now because nitrous oxide is so soluble in blood, there will be rapid diffusion of nitrous oxide down its concentration gradient into the pulmonary capillary. So rapid diffusion of nitrous out. This will be partly balanced by inward diffusion of nitrogen, N2, but the rate of these processes is vastly different because of the difference in solubility. So there's rapid diffusion of nitrous out with relatively slower diffusion of nitrogen in. So more gas is leaving the alveoli than is coming back in. And as a consequence of that, you get a reduction in alveolar volume. And as a consequence of the reduction in alveolar volume, you end up with a relative increase in the concentration of any gases remaining. And that's the concentration effect. And a natural question to ask at this point is to say, well, why don't we get this with the other volatile anaesthetic agents? And what it boils down to is the fact that we don't use enough of them. So nitrous oxide is not a very potent agent, i.e. it has a high MAC. So you need to use lots of nitrous in order to get a clinically significant effect. Because you need to use the high concentrations of nitrous, you end up getting uh, a significant change in alveolar volume, which then results in the concentration effect. 
with the other inhalation of anesthetic agents, because you're using them at much lower percentages, you don't get a clinically significant change in alveolar volume, and therefore you don't get a concentration effect. And next we go on to talk about the second gas effect, which is the phenomenon by which the speed of onset of inhalation and anesthetic agents is increased when they are administered with nitrous oxide as a carrier gas. And to understand that, we can go back to our patient, but this time we're delivering nitrous oxide in addition to a second volatile anaesthetic agent. So we've got some sevoflurane at 8% here as well. If we focus in again on the alveoli and the pulmonary capillary, for all the reasons we've just talked about, delivering high concentration of nitrous will see a reduction in the alveolar volume. And this is the concentration effect. Except in this case, we're not just concentrating the other normal gases, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. We're also concentrating our inhalation and anesthetic agent, our second gas, as it were. So we see a reduction in alveolar volume purely as a consequence of the concentration effect. But because of that, we'll see an increase in concentration of the second gas, which is in this case, sevoflurane. This will increase the rate of uptake because according to Fick's law of diffusion, if you increase the concentration gradient, you'll increase the rate of diffusion. And the increased rate of uptake will result in faster onset of anesthesia. And indeed, for a gas induction, particularly for children, we'll use a nitrous oxygen mix with our sevoflurane if we want fast and rapid onset anesthesia versus an air oxygen mix because we can utilise the concentration effect to increase the delivery of our second gas. And that is the second gas effect. Thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful.